that's it. A word to the wise, a word to somebody who wants to learn and grow and have wisdom in their life. Who you call your friend is important. The way they used to say is good company. How's it go? Brings, or bad company brings bad character. So in other words, who you hang around with, who you call your best friend, your running buddy, you become like them. If they no good, no, I didn't call nobody no good. Don't say that. But if they ain't doing wrong, and you running with them, if they're sinning, and you've been a part of what they're doing, you will become just like them. Yeah. If you run with people who love the Lord, Amen. You will become Amen. like them. Yep. And some of us, and we can tell, <coughs> we've been running with Satan. Yeah. How do we know you've been running with Satan? Because you look like him. And act like him. <laughs> and Satan is the kind of friend that will steal from you. Yes. He's the kind of friend that will kill you. Yes. And he's the kind of friend that all he wants to do is destroy you. He comes, the Bible says, to kill, 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 and destroy. Satan comes to utterly destroy us. Satan comes to take. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus says, I come. I'm coming to you to bring you life. That they might have an abundant life. In other words, it doesn't mean that you're going to be wealthy and rich. But it does mean that if you run with Jesus, your life will matter. Amen. Amen. There will be purpose, direction. Come on now. And at the end of your life, you won't say, I wasted my life. Thank you, Father. Thank A lot of people get to the end of their lives and say, Where have the years gone? Yeah, and what did I do? Yeah. Where's my legacy? Yeah, my kids is. Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's. Somebody steals from you. You're walking around and you have it, and all of a sudden, bam, my joy is gone. That's because you stopped running with the joy giver. That's right. Come on, come on. Boom. I used to have life, I used to feel alive. You stop running with the life giver. That's right. And Satan says, boom. Boom! I got it. You come in the church and you're not, you don't have the joy that you used to have. Yep. Oh, you know that when the relationship starts, first starts off, how your house is when the relationship starts off. <laughs> right? You know, you just got to. <laughs> You in love. Don't know why. Just, just in love. Just so happy to see you. Amen. Amen. Do you feel like that now? Yes. If you don't. Yes. If you don't feel like that right now about Jesus, it's because somebody's in your pocket. <laughs> And then Rob. Right. He had it, you had it, and you just let it go. Jesus says, I'm a good shepherd. The shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Satan, a great thief. He takes and steals. I had joy, now it's gone. I had love, now it's gone. 
my love is working on empty now. It used to be full, now it's empty. How do I know my love is empty? Because everything gets on my nerves now. <laughs> everything. It's like Satan that walked off. He took it. By theft. And a lot of times what we do is we don't blame Satan for what he's done. We blame another person. That's yeah. right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We always blame the other person as, as far as, and then we don't blame the real culprit behind us is Satan. Oh, the my. problem we oh. have is we're running with him and he steals from us and we think it's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do we keep blaming other people for our situation? Jesus was uh, speaking to Peter, and we talked about this a little bit earlier this morning. We're going to go um, in, in our Bible, and we're going to turn to uh, Ephesians real quick. Peter was talking to Jesus about um, his upcoming death, burial, and resurrection. Peter said, nope, 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 you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna die, Jesus. You ain't going to the cross. You ain't gonna give your blood up. And Jesus, he didn't speak to Peter, but he spoke to the power behind Peter. He said, Satan? A lot of times behind us, the, the people doing what they're doing is Satan. Yes. Right? He said, Satan, get thee what? Behind me. Behind me. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. See, that's why it's so much easier for me now to forgive people. Because you didn't do it. Satan did it and told you to tell me that, that you didn't like me. So if I go after you, Satan is sitting behind you laughing at me because you and me are arguing what's he doing. So we need to learn and discern who's doing what. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Some of y'all gonna get robbed before y'all leave the church. All right. So go and don't grab your wallet like this your purse and try to hang on to it. You gonna get robbed before you leave this church. I guarantee you. Some of you right now, because some of you ain't listening. You gonna get look, and you ain't even know it happened. You gonna walk out. And push. It's gone. <laughs> You're going to walk from this door to the end door and forget everything that's been said. Oh. Who do you think robbed you? Satan. He robbed Eve of the Word of God. Amen. Straight up robbed her. God told Adam to tell Eve that not to eat from what? And immediately Satan came to her and said, has God really said? Right. Some of you going to leave the church today and say, did God really say that what the pastor said? <laughs> so you're going to come in, you're going to leave in the same condition you came in with. Yes. Missing. The word of God. Your joy is gone. Who took it? Talk to me now. Somebody got to say something. If your joy is gone, who took it? Hey. I'm looking at some of your faces right now. You're looking like this. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out when you're going to get it. If somebody, if you ain't smiling right now, let me see who ain't smiling. <laughs> People put their head down. People ain't smiling. <laughs> you just got robbed. Yeah. Fruit of the spirit is love, yes, joy, it is. peace. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Who took it from? Mm. Satan said to her, "He just snatched the word from her." Mm -hmm. Has God said? Mm -hmm. And now the word of God is gone from her. She don't even have the word of God. Mm -hmm. And when you and when you don't have the word of God, you'll fall for anything. Because yes. right. as soon as it takes the word of God from you, who comes in next? Satan. 
Remember, he comes to kill. He's a killer. The definition of killer is to slay. Not only is he a thief. Let me tell you a little story. My, 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 my brother Eddie and Steve, they had a, uh, which, this is why I don't do this. <laughs> they both lived in an apartment, and their apartment was in the basement. And there's this little tiny window that they had in, in the kitchen, in the living room, and in one of their bedrooms. And in the middle of the night, somebody this small, <laughs> you know how big Eddie is, right? Yeah. You know how thick Stevie is, right? Yeah. They just came into that little tiny door. It had to be a little, like, oh. <laughs> and stole everything. Oh. Stole their wallets, their keys. And that's what a thief does. When you're asleep and not paying attention, he comes and steals. When you ain't reading your Bible, studying your Bible, praying, he comes. Not only is he a thief, he's a killer. The Bible says the definition of a killer is someone who slays. Someone who murders, someone who destroys, someone who smites, someone who comes with you with deadly intention to bring death and slaughter. Some of us, we have been killed. I see. He is a great killer. Look, every, every night you wake up in the morning, somebody is yeah. Who you think is doing all of that? That's right. It's Satan. The Bible says that he was a murderer from the beginning. Yeah. Who was the one who killed their brother? Cain. Cain. Killed who? Yeah. Who do you think told Cain to kill him? Yeah. Him. Cold, blooded, slaughter. Yes. Who do you think is telling people now to kill people? Man, I was not too far from down here, and I'm still in shock. A young man came out of an apartment, and, and the video shows these two men sneaking around under the car mm -hmm. with guns. They wait until the kids get in the car to kill the guy. Oh, no. I'm like, oh, you gotta be joking. Oh, no. oh, it's not bad enough you had a problem with him. Oh, no. so, when, 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 when Satan is on my slaughter, he's trying to get all of us. Oh, yeah. What kind of person? Oh. It's not a person, remember? Oh, it's Satan behind that person. Oh, it's trying to kill all of us. Why don't you know what he wants to do? All of you in here who are Christian, he wants to kill your testimony. Yeah, yeah, he, does. Yeah. he wants to kill the power yeah. in your life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You were, we were created for something greater than this. Yeah. He kills our joy and we stay at home. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There's a lot of Christians right now sitting at home yeah. right. or washing their car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or getting ready to cook what? Yeah. Yeah. Totally ineffective right. for the body of Christ. I don't even want to go to church anymore. All they do is talk about money. I've been here 20 years. I ain't talked about money yet. Cain killed Abel. The Bible says that Satan is a destroyer. This destroyer means to drink down. You know, like when you destroy your pot. <laughs> right? You drink it real fast. You tear it up, don't you? Yep. And when you get done with it, what do you do? <laughs> That's what Satan is. He wants to take everything from us and destroy us and crumble us up until it's over. The, the destroyer needs to swallow down, the destroyer to put away entirely and to render, render, render useless. What he wants to do is get all of us in hell. That's, the, that's his mind side set. And there's only one way you go to hell is that's like you don't accept the, 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 the grace of God. Everybody in this room could be going to heaven if you wanted to. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. Right? So, Satan is a destroyer. Peter says, I know this dude. 
He says, I'm going to tell y'all right now, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may. He will try to devour your marriage. Yes, he will. In fact, I'll tell you right now, you don't believe it? He's roaming up and down this church right now. Yes, sir. You don't think he is in here right now? You don't care about the sermon? No. He's watching to see who ain't, ain't paying attention. Let me see who's sleeping. You guys think we're going yeah, who's texting? Who's on their phone? <laughs> he's looking. He's all oh, he's texting. Oh, he's thinking about where he's going to eat when he leaves church. <laughs> <laughs> he's thinking right now. He's going to take his father's day. I know I'm going to get some. Uh-huh. They ain't gave it to me yet, but when I get home, <laughs> I got something. They're going to surprise me, yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus says, I come and give it. But then I had life. Mm-hmm. And life more. So you can tell who you run with. If you ain't got no joy, you run with Satan. If you ain't got no love, you run with Satan. If you ain't got no peace, you run with Satan. If you're a murderer, you run with Satan. If you're a destroyer, you run with Satan. Jesus says, He comes to take it. I come to give. See who you run with? You run with people who take from you? That ain't a friend. Or you run with people who give. Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundant. In fact, when you read that word, he says, I come to give you life. He says, I come to loose you from the power of yeah, yeah. 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 Loose you. In other words, yeah. untie you. Mm-hmm. If you're over here, he will untie you. Yeah. The Bible says that not only does he unloose us and untie us, he unfastens us. He overthrows us. He breaks the chains that hold us. He destroys. He dissolves. He unloses. He melts. He takes everything that Satan has done to us and smashes it from us. Yep. That's what the word says. Jesus says, I come to give you life. Jesus says, I come to destroy. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. The works of the devil. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yes. How do I know that? So come, some of you came in here with a chain around your neck. Yes, sir. Yes, chain on your arm. Yes, chain on your feet. I heard them rattling behind you. You just can't. <laughs> <laughs> you got a chain with sin and anger and bitterness. Yes. Fornication and drugs yes. and alcohol. Yes. Unforgiveness. You came in here chained yes. like the same had you. But somehow, when you found out who Jesus was, and who comes to bring you life and life more abundantly, as the song says, those chains started to do what? Break, 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 there, there, there was a man who, 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 who was a slave. And he was free of his slavery. But he didn't want to be free. He says, I don't want to be free. I, I want to remain a slave. Although you were free and you are not a, no longer a slave, but you want to remain a slave. And he even made it to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court says, well, if you want to be a slave, <laughs> go right ahead. Jesus. And be a slave to sin. If that's what you want, then this church ain't for you. But if you want to be free of this, Jesus says, I'll come to give you life. And life more. But yes. Yeah. I want to say something real quick. And this is going to be quick. <laughs> what? You, what and, I, and I just be honest. What has Christ? This is, this is a moment of 
it's reflecting upon yourself. If there's somebody close to you that's saying, you ain't thinking about them, you're thinking about what you, what God has done for you. God, and let me tell you what he's done. See, as, as a Christian, as a believer, you might not know this. Everybody in this room who have been free, the first thing you've been free is from the bondage of sin. What do I mean by the bondage of sin? What I mean by the bondage of sin is I know a guy who used to drink all the time. And even if there's a tornado, a hurricane, fire, brimstone, three o'clock in the morning, he gonna get up and get something to drink. That means you're a bondage to what? You ain't free. At three o'clock in the morning, as best I can, I'm gonna be asleep. And Satan got you. Get a drink. Yes, sir. So, we talked about it. When Christ comes to your life, guess what changed you? If anybody in this room got changed, still on you. I know where the key is. The key is who? Not only that, Jesus frees us from the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is death. death. So everybody who sins and not in Jesus, the Bible says you die. In case I'm boring you, if you die without Jesus, you go to hell. You will not be bored in hell. You'll be running around screaming and hollering and saying, whoa, I did not listen to that sermon the pastor was preaching. Because it's hot down here. I was getting sleepy in church, but now I ain't asleep. Can't sleep. Won't sleep. But now, since Christ has come home, this is what abundant life is. I will never, ever be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. When I see the death angel coming, I'm like, Come on, boy. Come on, man. with it. Some of us are going to be like, you can't outrun death. You can't lose it. I'm free from the guilt and shame of sin. I did a lot of things, which is none of your business. But our life now, Although I'm ashamed of the past. And, and, and when, I'm, when you're ashamed, you, you're afraid and you don't want to do anything. You want to hide because you don't want anybody to bring up your past. <laughs> but now the Bible says this is part of my abundant life. I'm not the same person anymore. In fact, I don't even know who that person was. I know. I know. I'm looking like, who is that? That wasn't me, was it? I know it was, but I'm like, who is that? I did that? No. But now God has erased it so thoroughly that that ain't even me no more. I can't even, in fact, whenever Satan reminds me of my past, I remind him of hell that's coming this way. It's no longer I who live now. It's Christ that lives in me. Amen. For me to live now is Christ. Yes. So now I'm not living for Larry anymore. Mm-hmm. I got purpose now I'm living for Christ. That's right. Amen. The Bible says not only is in this an abundant life, he's given us free, freedom to live. Yes. I'm alive now. Yes. Anybody know what a zombie is? Yes. What's a zombie? What's a zombie? Walking dead. Like this. You ain't alive, you just walk. And that's what most people in life are. They just they have no life in them at all. They just walk. They're zombies. But the life that Christ has given them is a new life. Not only am I free to live, I'm free to serve now. Come on now. I used to 
be in so much sin that I didn't serve God, but now I'm free to serve. Amen. Last scripture. Let's go to Psalms 100 and we'll wrap this up. Now, if, if I'm talking to you at the end of the service, you should come up. That's right. You just come up. Check your pockets. Yes. <laughs> We're trying to get to you before you leave the church. <laughs> Thank you. Psalm 100. Free to serve. Are you turning in Psalm 100? I, when I was in high school, I had an uncle who was rich. He lived out in California. And I talked to him a couple times. I'm like, he ain't no smarter than me. If he can make it out there, I can make it. If he can be rich, I can be rich. I went to college and took up all, I mean, all those classes. And, and I was chasing after a person. A lot of times we look up to people and don't look up to them. I don't know about him. He could be successful and rich. And still got his stuff sold. Mm-hmm. Just because you're rich don't mean you That's you right. you saved. Right. Yeah. I'm not envious at all. The Bible says we'll be free to serve. See, I don't know if I should tell you this or not, but I like getting in trouble. So. <laughs> I watched it. I tried to watch everybody who came in this church to see what kind of a spirit came in. <laughs> this is an amazing thing. Just sit back and watch it. Some people, when you came in here, you're smiling, you're happy, you're on your tiptoes, you just work. Some of you came in here with your head down. Some of you came in here frowning, mad, angry, sad. You brought that mess in here. Come on, Pastor. We had to ask some of you to leave <laughs> and get yourself right and then come back. Get yourself together before you come in here. Some of you came in here with joy in your eyes, your eyes sparkling, you're happy. I get to be with the Lord again. Yes, I get to be with believers again. Yes, yes, yes. This is the highlight of my week. Yes, I'm starting my week off right. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise. Uh-huh. What? Uh-huh. All ye uh-huh. yes. Serve the Lord. Yes. Yes. Come in his presence. Yes. Yes. Know ye that the Lord is God. Uh-huh. It is he that has made us. Yes. And not we ourselves. Uh-huh. We are his people. Yes. And the sheep of his pastor. Enter to, into these gates with thanksgiving yes. and his court with praise. Yes. Be thankful yes. unto him. Yes. And what? Bless the name. Bless the name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth. Stop running with Satan and start running with Jesus. Amen. Anybody want to get saved out of their life? Come on. Don't sit there and fight any of this. Come on up. Don't be a saint. Do not be a saint.
he says that if we were ashamed of him, that when he gets in his glory, he will be ashamed of us in the presence of him. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Is there a part of your life? Because if you're sitting down right now in this church, that means you got it all together. Amen. Amen. If you're up here, you're saying the Satan stole from me. He robbed me. And he destroyed some part of my life. And I'm here to stop walking with him. I'm here for the abundant life. And the joy to that. I came into this church with my head down. I intend to come to leave this church with my head down. I have joy now and joy everlasting that can only come from
accepted you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. If they can repeat after me, in Jesus' name, say, Father, forgive me. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against you. I will not want to sin anymore. Want to sin anymore. I accept your son. I accept your son. What he has done on the cross. What he's done on the cross. I believe he died for me. I believe he died. I believe he set me free. I believe he set me free. Father. Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I want to tell Satan. I no longer want what you offer. I no longer want what you offer. I know if I cancel out everything you give me. I know if I cancel everything that you give me. Father, deliver me. Deliver me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father. For saving me. For saving me. Now, Father, still back for the ten of Israel that have spoken it, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Seal it, Lord God. Satan, we remind you that they are off limits now. You have no right to them. You have no control. So release everything you think you have. Yes, Father. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Send individuals, Father, that will build them up, Lord God, put a hedge around them. Father, we thank you. We pray. Father, move in the midst of us, Lord God. Even them who came up to have illness, Lord God. Father, I ask that you would move in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Regulate blood pressure. Regulate uh, diabetes, Lord God. Father, if there's any foreign objects in cancer, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we commit the disease. If there's any doubt, Lord God, lasting acid, Father, in Jesus' name, bring it down, Lord God. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, that you're healing hearts, Lord God, that you're healing every disease in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you and we count it as done. For we have spoken it in the earth and in the heaven. For God, we are waiting for your manifestation of it. In Jesus' name. Oh, 